Hey, bonjour YouTube. Do you want to know more about how to prioritize? Do you want to know more about meeting efficiency or meeting culture? Do you want to know how to manage your calendar? Well, today is your lucky day, my friend, because today I'm meeting with Lauren Allen from Right Hand Business Coach. And we're having a very nice conversation talking about these three topics I just mentioned among others. As usual, I'm doing all the work for you guys so that you just have to sit there and enjoy the conversation. Remember, blue is for mindset advice and orange is more for tactical advice that you can implement today. Make sure you watch the video until the end because at the end we're gonna do what I call a tete-a-tete. Tete-a-tete -tete means literally head to head. It's basically a French version of the lightning round. I put my French berry on and I'm asking just random questions to Lauren. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I really enjoy my conversation with Lauren, so will you, I hope. <laughs> Today we are meeting with Lauren Allen from Right Hand Business Coach. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. So can you tell us who you are? What's your story? Sure, uh, my name is Lauren Allen. I also live here in San Diego. I've been here about two years and I started Right Hand Business Coach about two years ago, actually, as soon as I moved here. And I work with people who are leaving the corporate industry and help them plan and launch their small business. Okay, so you're helping people that have been working in a, in a corporate environment for years and years What's the, what's the typical type of uh, clients you have? Um, well, actually, I've worked with multiple interior designers. So as they were leaving their corporate interior designing firms, yeah. um, we've been launching their business for the last year and a half. Okay, cool. Uh, so you are here to explain us a little bit how you manage your time, how you uh, are being efficient in your, in your business. You, you can tell us about your practice, how you do things, but also what are the best practices you've seen because I'm sure out of the people that you're actually coaching, they may have some best practices too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what is your system that you use, like in, as a general, very open question, the system you use to get shit done? Um, very simply, every day I think about what is the one thing that needs to get done that will make me feel successful. Mm -hmm. And I use this on my coaching clients as well because I feel like we get overwhelmed often by needing to do all the things when there's usually one or two really important tasks that actually move the needle in the business. Yeah. So I like to think about most of the time, what is the one thing that will make me successful for that day? And yeah. so I make sure that I cross that off the list before I move on to any of the other like million things that I need to do. Do you do this, so you do it on a daily basis, but do you do this like at different granularities? I mean that, do you do this for at the weekly level or monthly or quarterly or like yearly level? I would say probably monthly. Yeah. Um, depending on what's going on in the business, I um, make sure that I'm spending every single day in some sort of business development capacity. Um, whether that is on social media, whether I'm in a uh, doing something like this, yeah. or if I'm in a group setting, or if I'm meeting a particular person, I always make sure that I spend some part of my day and my week making sure that I'm introducing myself and meeting someone new. Yeah. And then, so I think about that as a month. So I'm like, okay, what events and what things am I going to be doing over the next month? And like, what's my like weekly routine? And then. I add in, like right now I'm taking a copywriting course, so I make sure that I add that in every single week. So one week I'm doing module one, one week, week I'm doing module two, but I make sure that I kind of basically do my homework all through the week. So I think of it as, again, it's still like, what's moving the needle? I really think of things on a daily to like monthly basis. Actually, I'm going to ask you for your copywriting my course because I need that. Okay. I need that. I also need English classes. Uh, <laughs> I can't help you with the English classes. <laughs> no, but yeah. So uh, you, uh, so depending on if it's like purely pro producing for your business, but also uh, keeping some time for doing networking events yeah. or doing some collaborations like that. 
we actually met at a networking event. I don't know if you remember. It was and a like, holiday party. Holiday party from Patsy. Yeah. yeah. That okay. was six months ago, and I remember I met you, and that was the day that I posted, that I uploaded my first video on my YouTube channel. Yeah. I didn't want to do any networking event before because I haven't done anything tangibly, like really uh, factually before that. Yeah. The day I posted my YouTube video, I said, okay, now I'm ready. Yeah. I can go talk about something. Yeah. <laughs> and we were, we happened to be standing side by side and Pat Flynn at his holiday party said, turn to the person to your left and say hello and introduce yourself. And that's how we met. Yeah. And I'm still on your left, by the way. You still on my left, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you were talking about your podcasting? Oh, yes. Yeah? My podcast. For, for, for your podcast? Yeah, I was like, Tell us more about your podcast. I was worried. I was like, what did I commit myself to at Christmas? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, yeah, so I launched a podcast April the 3rd, I believe, um, called Corporate School Dropout. And I interview people who have left the corporate industry to either start a business or start a social enterprise business. Anything that um, makes them happy and successful outside of climbing the ladder of corporate nine to five. We were talking as we were preparing the video, we were talking about one of the videos that I posted. I'm gonna uh, have the link right here appearing right now about how to run efficient meetings. You wanted to yeah. talk a little bit about that? I found Hugo's video about like the five steps of creating a successful meeting really interesting. And then I asked him, I was like, okay, I understand all of those steps. I used to take all of those steps, but then how do you combat corporate culture of people showing up unprepared continually. Even though you've taken the five steps to make it a successful meeting, you've set the agenda, you've got your objectives, but then you've walked in um, from a previous meeting and no one has done the work. So now we're talking about change. And as you you are an expert in change, you will understand, you, will, you know already that, first of all, if you want to have something change in a corporate environment or in any environment for that matter you need to explain why we do things yeah. why we change so actually that would be the first thing why would people need to actually come prepared to a meeting you need to explain the reason why because it's it kind of it can be a little bit counterintuitive if i prepare if i do all of this spend all this time before the meeting i'm actually losing time but it's kind of counterintuitive. They don't necessarily understand that on the long run, they will save time. If you have a very efficient meeting, like during 30 minutes and you take all the decisions very quickly with the right people involved, and then yes, at the end, you will save time. So that's explaining why the, to start with. Secondly, I would say that, so this video is mostly for managers in a corporate environment, but that can apply uh, apply to other environments. But to answer your questions in, on the culture change, you need to have strong sponsorship. Yeah. People, uh, the main stakeholders, like the, the top management, that is fully engaged with the change that you want to have. If you want to change the settings of how the meetings are run, that's what Jeff Bezos is doing at Amazon. Uh, they are doing like the two, how they call like the two pizza teams. That's actually a video that I prepared and that is going to be live maybe in a couple weeks. How to run efficient meetings. Two pizza team. You cannot organize a meeting if you have more people that can be fed by two pizzas. So ah, okay. he strongly believes in yeah. that and he empowers his people and he, he applies very strong sponsorship. Mm -hmm. If you have more people in this room, Jeff Bezos himself would say, that's not okay, that's not the rule, that's not what we said we would do, yeah. then we either cancel the meeting or we just strongly advise to change. So if you have strong sponsorship, I think that really helped from a, from a change. Yeah. That was a long answer, <laughs> but I, I like a lot of answers. <laughs> I, I followed, I followed, and I just remember um, I, another, another company I worked for was really um, structured around like kind of like staying in your lane, yeah. I guess you would say, like but staying at your level. So if meetings were happening and say we only had those two pizzas, mm -hmm. and 
and it was a lot of people, maybe they weren't decision makers, but they were the people, the doers. Yeah. So the doers are having a meeting and we're doing all the work. And then we would have a separate meeting of like, okay, here's what the doers did. Here's um, uh, a meeting for the leadership to actually start making decisions. And then those leaders, leadership would then take it to an executive level. And so it kind of just, you would end up with three meetings, but there were three versions of the story. Then increase communications, and that's where you also need to not only be prepared to the meeting, not only run efficiently meetings, but that's going to be a third video, by the way, how to manage after the meeting. Yeah. I strongly recommend to have meeting minutes mm -hmm. that you need to you need to communicate around to the main stakeholders and so that in order to avoid duplicate meetings because yeah. that happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But you know what's great? I don't have to do any of that anymore. <laughs> That's good. But you still have meetings, right? I still have meetings, <laughs> but they are so much more fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Is there any tip or secret that you have from an efficiency standpoint that you want to share with the audience? Yeah, so I found um, calendar and scheduling with multiple people and it was just gonna, it was just starting to be a nightmare. So instead of going back and forth of like, when are you available? No, I'm not available that day, you know that kind of like back and forth negotiation. Um, I kind of nip that in the bud and I have a calendar system called Calendy. And I do pay for the year long subscription, but it allows me to divide out my calendar based on topic. And so when I'm gonna be meeting with someone, say um, in an initial consultation, they get a certain link in an email from me and they select the time and the date that works the best for them. And it's always gonna populate for me. It's always on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. That's when I wanna meet with those people. So every Tuesday, I know that I'm having introductory calls um, back to back every half hour. Um, and then if it's a longer one hour coaching call or if it's a podcast interview, they only get that type of um, link to schedule that type of call. So. I, once I developed this process, it has greatly reduced the stress of trying to schedule and trying to meet everyone's needs when it's really up to, um, up to me to have that structure. That's so. a great tip for managing Canada. Maybe I, I'm, go, I'm gonna ask you for the details of this. Yeah, and maybe I, I'm gonna put it in the, in the description of the video. I love it. It changed my life once I found the link and then started using it because I feel like that's where we get into trouble is when we like sometimes use things, we sometimes use a process when they are most effective when you stick to your process and continually use it. If you find that it fails after maybe six months yeah. or so and that process isn't working for you any longer, I say that's when you abandon it and find something new. Yeah. But if it's working, stick to it. So you need to uh, give the process a chance yeah. and stick to it and be okay with pivoting if you if you need. Yeah. So it's time for the tête-à-tête. Tête-à-tête, -tête. Tête -tête, what it is, is that I put my French hat. It's called a beret, as you know. This is, by the way, the real beret, the real French beret. And I'm gonna ask you, no yes or no questions. Okay. Like very quick questions with quick answers. Are you okay. ready? Yeah. Dogs or cats? Dog. More money or more sleep? More money. Sweet or salty? Sweet. Mornings or nights? Midday. That's not one of the answers. Okay, I take <laughs> it. How many cups of coffee a day? Two. During the weekends? Two. Two. Yeah, entrepreneurs don't have weekends. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Favorite cheese? Oh, um, aged cheddar. Aged cheddar. White wine or red wine? Yes. How many hours of sleep do you get each night? Eight plus. Eight plus, that's good. Uh, what's the book currently on your nightstand? Playing Big by Tara Moore. Okay. You recommend it? Yeah, yeah, it's geared towards women in entrepreneurial, actually corporate and entrepreneurial space. And she is talking about um, kind of how we 
don't allow ourselves to play big and like tools and processes how we can start stepping into our power and start expanding and playing big. Okay. If I go to your phone right now and I look at your Spotify or whatever playlist, what's the last song that you play? Uh, it was a country song. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what's your mantra or the phrase you live by? It's, it's really strange, but it's love yourself to just go for it. If your dog could talk, what would he or she say about you? Oh, she... <laughs> uh, so her name is Sunny, and I feel like she has, um, her alter ego has a high-pitched Lily voice because she's kind of a small, fluffy dog. And she would probably say more snuggles, please. Yeah, yeah. snuggles are the best. What's the French sentence that you know? Um, puis j'allais aux toilettes. <laughs> <laughs> puis j'allais aux toilettes. That's all I did. Okay, puis j'allais aux toilettes, it means, do you know what it, you know what it Can means? Can I go right? to the bathroom, yeah? please? That's very important. Have you been to France? No, but I took two years of French in high school and yeah. I really just didn't want to be in class and so we had to be able to say can I go to the bathroom <laughs> and I went to the bathroom like every 15 minutes for about two years so that's the only thing I remember. Perfect. Yeah. So that's the end of the tete -a tete Okay. How can people find you? Uh, through righthandbusinesscoach.com and also corporateschooldropout.com. Okay. So thank you, Lauren, for being with us today. Thank being you. with me, it's not us. It's, it's, it's just the two. <laughs> just the two. <laughs> just thank you for being with me. Uh, I had a good time with you. Oh, thank you. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Au revoir. Bye.